On day five of your 10 day challenge, we're gonna look at some tiny unconventional chord shapes. And of course, if you wanna participate in this free acoustic guitar 10 day challenge, uh, it's super easy. Step one, go to weplayeveryday.com. Step two, click join the group, join the Facebook group. And step three, go ahead and click on the course guide right at the top of the Facebook group. It has all the details that you're gonna to need to know. Times, links to tabs, replays, it's all there. And right now, before we get started, I want to ask you something uh, very directly. I want you to please share this with uh, a guitar geek friend of yours. It's super easy to do, uh, and, and I want you to do it because there's been so many light bulb moments and so many breakthroughs, so many small wins. I really want to share the guitar geek love as much as we possibly can and get as many guitar geeks in here having fun and learning at the same time, celebrating our guitar geekiness, if you will. Uh, it's super easy. All you have to do is click on this video, then in the upper right, click on share. Once you click that button, click post and voila you've shared the live stream. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Tony Policastro. I'm part of an underground group of acoustic guitar enthusiasts you've probably never heard of. We're not here to play face-melting guitar solos or judge other guitar players. Our purpose is much greater than that. For us, it's about expanding our quality of life through music and having fun with our guitar, not just mastering it. Getting better at guitar is proof that we do have what it takes to be a guitar player, which means we can build stronger bonds with friends and create lasting musical family traditions. But if you asked a guitar snob or a music academic, they would turn up their nose and say their way is better. Yet this way of seeing the guitar is changing lives every single day. We follow a specific framework and set of values that keeps us focused on what matters most, human connection, constant progress, and fun. It's happening, and we call it living the acoustic life. This is our acoustic life, and these are our stories. Welcome to day five of your 10-day challenge, the day of tiny little bitty chord shapes. And whenever I think of little bitty chord shapes, I think of Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first, and of course, Levi Quila, the man with the technical plan. <laughs> Hello, Noah. Little bitty chord shapes? I... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to throw you guys for a loop, and I, I, I pretty much threw myself for a loop. I couldn't even finish your welcoming and, and hello, of course. You succeeded. Well, good. I'm, I'm super glad. <laughs> uh, I want to dig into today's lesson as, as soon as we possibly can. It's a, I think it's going to be a, a revelation for a lot of, uh, a lot of us guitar geeks uh, because these are chord shapes. They're a little unconventional but very, very useful, especially in conjunction with the theme of the week, uh, chromatic runs. Uh, but first, Noah, how's it looking out there? Do we got comments? Do we got people watching? Oh, yeah. We could do some shout-outs maybe? Yeah, people are tuning in. Uh, Pierre from Nova Scotia. Cheers, Pierre. Uh, Kevin from Hawaii. Uh, Jason, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, who else we got going on? Elettra. It's like scrolling while I'm scrolling at the same time as <laughs> new stuff. Uh, Elettra from Brooklyn. Awesome. Uh, Robert. Uh, yeah. Hello to everybody. Everybody's got good sound and awesome. uh, good audio, good visual. Fantastic. That's good. That, that is outstanding to hear. Thanks, everybody, for chiming in. And, of course, let us know where you're from. And, I mean, let's start the day off with some hearts and likes. Can we get a flood of those, please, I, for Tony? <laughs> I, I'm going to need some help waking up this morning. I'm gonna yeah, do the whole like, bit. oh, I can't hear you. Yeah. can't hear you. <laughs> a little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> 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 can, can I see one of your guys' uh, phones just so I can see hearts right now? Oh, uh, yeah, hold on. I need him to, to light up hold my on. eyes. It's not, I don't, okay. I don't see. Oh, that's because I haven't clicked in yet. Hold oh, on. Oh, so, Okay, we got Cleet from uh, St. Augustine, Florida. There we go. Awesome. Did I say that right? Awesome. Uh, oh, there they are. Oh, that's good. That's good to see. Oh, there they are. Okay, I'm awake. That. I'm awake. Okay. Boom. Just, as, just like that. Awesome. Um, thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. I almost want to say... You know how, like, in the, the YouTube chat, if you scroll on the chat feed, yeah. it pauses it? Yeah. So if people write new comments, it doesn't matter. Well, here, yeah. it just is I like... see one that I want to read, and right when I go to read it, it goes bloop and moves yeah. because a new comment comes in. I'm and sorry. No, you're just going to have to get quicker. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> Okay. Well, today I donned the Chicago Blackhawks shirt because, well, to be truthfully honest, they need all the help they can get at this point of the season, but that is completely besides the point. Uh, today we're going to dig into what I like to call key chords, really studies of uh, chords and how they work within a key, okay? And 
The cool thing about this 10-day challenge, and I've said this before, but I want to make sure it's really clear, is that this follows the exact Tony's Acoustic Challenge practice framework. Every Monday, we'll do a warm-up. Every Tuesday, a lick. Every Wednesday, we'll learn scale and use that to improvise. Thursday, yesterday, we worked on rhythm guitar, and today is Friday, so we look, like to look at uh, chords within a key, how they work, and maybe some new looks at some old chord shapes, which is exactly what's on tap for today. And of course, next week, we're going to run through the whole thing again, but we're going to do a little finger picking. It's going to be a little bit blues centric. So you've got a lot to look forward to, but I don't want to confuse or muddy the waters right now. So let's focus on the chords at hand today. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and play through an example. Uh, basically what you're getting into so you can see the context so you can see the helicopter view of what I'm about to teach you. Then I'll go ahead and go through an explanation which uh, I'll go through each chord shape to tell you where to put your fingers and basically share with you why we're, we're learning these chord shapes. And then I'll go through it with you uh, with, uh, with the aid of a metronome to kind of give you a gauge and, and something to kind of look forward to or work towards. Uh, so with all that being said, let's get started with today's challenge. <laughs> Today's challenge is called, uh, I think it's called Open Invitation. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Invitation to the Open Sea. I toyed with a couple different names, uh, but that's, that's what it's called, Invitation to Open Sea. And I just like to think of us, you know, sitting in a boat, a raft, maybe a sailboat, I don't know, just with our guitars hanging out, sailing on the open sea. That's what I like to think. So just go ahead and, and bring that up in your mind real quick. And while you're bringing that up in your mind, you may as well go ahead and bring up the tab as well, uh, which is located. It's a link. Uh, it's posted at the top of the comments. Go ahead and click on that link, and that will, be, that will allow you to be able to pull up the tab in a separate window so you can follow along with these chord shapes. Hang tight, people. I oh. am getting it in there. So Levi, be Levi's in, there in the process second. of getting it in there. Uh, it will be there shortly. If I know anything about Levi and his technical plan, it'll be there within <laughs> within two shakes of a um, swizzle stick. Is that, okay. a, is that a candy? Is that you a, know what? That's a fantastic know. saying. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at, we're really looking at uh, uh, three string chords today. And I, I think the, the reason that I want to um, show you these three sting, string chords is because oftentimes when learning chords, it feels as though uh, it's like, oh gosh, I have to. Do I have to strum everything? I, maybe part of the chord is unclear, or maybe you've, you're playing with somebody and they're really handling the bass end of things with their strumming. You're thinking, well, gosh, I'm just mimicking what, exactly what they're doing. I'd like to add something different. Hence these little three chord shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and play through them real quickly for you, so you get an idea of what they look like and what they sound like. And this is all in the key of C. And we're following the, uh, what I like to call the naturally occurring chords within the key of C. So here is what we're going to play today. Really, uh, 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 not a lot of real estate that we're covering, and some some what I like to I mean these are kind of what I like to call mini chords, and you might think, well, gosh, those sound kind of puny. They, it depends on how you treat them, and the reason that that I'm showing you these these three string chords is because they will really go along with the chromatic movement that we've kind of been looking at this week. More on that in a bit. Let's get to the nitty gritty of what chords we're actually making. And I'll show you how to make each and every one. And there's actually not a lot of shapes that you're going to need to learn. There's a lot of duplicate shapes in here. So let's start out with a C chord, okay? But not the C that we've been using. We'll get there in a second. Uh, this C chord is actually located uh, between the third and the fifth fret. Uh, your index finger will be on the first fret of the high E, pinky finger the fifth fret of the B, and your ring finger the fifth fret of the G. That's actually a C chord. All right, if I play this, and then go ahead and play a full C, you'll hear the resemblance. It's just a different voicing, okay? All the notes to make up a C chord are still there. It's just a different voicing, meaning it sounds different, okay? So that's our first chord. Again, that's a C. Index finger, high, uh, high E string, third fret. Pinky finger, fifth fret of the B, 
and ring finger fifth fret of the G. And when you're strumming, all you're gonna do is just strum uh, from the G string down. G, B, and high E. Okay, from there, we're gonna make a D minor shape, kind of the classic D minor shape. So that means our index finger is gonna be on the first fret of the high E, ring finger on the third fret of the B, and middle finger on the second fret of the G, okay? That's gonna be your D minor chord. And again, we're just strumming the high three strings. You can include the D string if you want to, but I really wanna to focus today's efforts on the high three strings, and you'll see why here in a second. Okay, so that's a D minor chord. This chord gave me problems for ever and actually still does. Uh, it's really, um, it's, it seems like a very simple chord, but it's really important you get good arch in your fingertips and that you're right on your fingertips while you're fretting this chord. Otherwise, it's gonna sound something like, you're gonna get a lot of that. So if, that's, if, if you're hearing that right now, go ahead and bring the palm of your fretting hand closer to the neck of the guitar. That'll give you more arch and put you up on your fingertips and that'll allow those strings to speak nice and clearly. Okay, so that's our D minor chord. Again, index finger, high E string, first fret, ring finger, third fret of the B string, and middle finger, second fret of the G string. And I want you to hold on to that shape because we're about to make an E minor chord, but don't leave this D minor chord quite yet. Because for the E minor chord, we're gonna take this exact shape and move each finger towards the guitar body, up the neck, two frets. So hold that shape down and slide it up two frets. Now your index finger will be on the third fret of the high E, ring finger, fifth fret of the B, and middle finger, fourth fret of the G. That is an E minor chord. Again, we're focusing our strums on the high three strings. So, so far we have that, yeah, we'll call it the middle of the next C. Moving to a D minor. And then moving that shape up to an E minor. And again, we're moving that shape up two frets. From there, we're gonna make an F. Okay. And this is going to be a mini, mini F chord because we're only focusing on the high three strings. I'll repeat that about 70 more times just so you know. I want to make it very clear. We're only focusing on the high three strings. So for that mini, mini F chord, we're going to be barring the B and high E string at the first fret. And you can rotate your index finger a little bit to the side. That'll make those notes a little bit easier to fret. And your middle finger will grab the second fret of the G string. Okay, that's going to be your mini F chord. So it's a big transition from that E minor, that mid-neck E minor, to that mini, mini F. Okay. But once you're there, that's, that's going to be that F chord. And then for the G chord, we're going to actually use this same exact shape. We're just going to move it up two frets. So our index finger is going to end up on the third fret of the B in high E string, and our middle finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the G. So that's a G chord. Okay, so, so far, we've got our mid-neck C, our D minor, our E minor, our F, our G, and then we're gonna make an A minor chord. But again, we're only focusing on the high three strings. So all you're gonna do is take this shape that you're using for the mid-neck G chord lift up the bar so you're only fretting the B string, that high E string is open, and slide it back towards the headstock, two frets. Your index finger ends up on the first fret of the B, middle finger, second fret of the G, and that high E string is open. That's gonna be your A minor chord. Okay, It's like a normal A minor, we're just focusing on those high three strings. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a G7 chord. And all we have to do for that is drop our index finger to the first fret of the high E, let go of everything else, and just strum, strum from the G string all the way down to the high E. That's gonna be a G7. And then we'll finish up on a C chord, which essentially is raising our index finger to the first fret of the B, leaving the G and the high E string open. And that is your C chord a different C chord than what we started with. Okay, so the full run through, I'll do this a little bit slower just so you can kind of maybe follow along if you've got your guitar up. We've got our mid-neck C. 
we've got our D minor. And then we're going to bump that chord shape up two frets to make our E minor. And then we're going to drop back into that mini, mini F. And then we're going to take that chord shape, slide it up two frets for a mini, mini G. Lift up that index finger so it's only on the B string, slide it back two frets for an A minor. Drop the index finger to the high E string first fret. And then raise that index finger to the first fret of the B for a C chord. Okay. So cool, there's these mini chords and you're thinking, how am I ever going to use these? I like to strum, I like to do all sorts of really cool things. And these just don't really pack any punch. Au contraire, they do pack a huge punch. There's a reason, there's actually two distinct reasons why I picked this series of chords. Well, well three. Let me, give, let me give you the full helicopter view. First, we're studying the chords within the key of C. All of what we're playing naturally occurs in the key of C, meaning that the C major scale's notes compose all of these chords. So, if you develop, if you on your own develop a chord progression using the chords, the naturally occurring chords in the key of C, you can take that C major scale that we learned on Wednesday and go ahead and plug that in and start creating melodies or improvising. Okay, so that's the first reason. Is it kind of a cool connection there? The second reason is that these mini chord shapes allow for us to move chromatically, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay. Specifically, the move from the D minor to the E minor and the move from the F to the G chord. Okay. And the last reason I chose this particular chord uh, progression and the way that I'm voicing these chords is because they're actually all connected. And this is one of the kind of secret ninja pieces that I wanted to inject into this lesson because oftentimes when changing chords, going from one chord to another, it feels like you have to take a leap of faith and just blast your, just, just put your fingers on the fingerboard and hopefully they land in the right spot. But let's actually analyze each of these transitions because I think you'll notice a really cool common thread. So starting with that first C chord, that what I'll call the mid-neck C, okay, we're going to go to a D minor. So what I'm looking for is a finger that's already on the string that it needs to be on. And in this case, it's actually my index finger. So when I go to make that D minor chord, my first instinct, my first move, is taking that index finger and planting it on the first fret of the high E string. Okay? It hasn't even left the string. From there, I can create the D minor shape. Okay? The beautiful thing about the D minor to the E minor change is that, well, it's the same shape, we're just moving it up two frets. Okay? And then when I go from the E minor to the F, I can keep that index finger on the high E string again. And actually, more importantly, I can keep my middle finger on the G string. So when I move that back, I kind of lean on those two fingers to, to get me grounded and anchored, and then I make that F chord. Okay, so again, we're looking for kind of a, a finger that stays on that ex exact string for the next shape. Then from the F to the G, well, that's an, another easy one because that's just moving the same shape up two frets. Okay, from the G to the A minor, well, we already have two fingers right where they need to be, on the right string. Our middle finger's on the G, our index finger's on the B. All we have to do is tilt up so we leave that high E string open and slide back two frets. From the A minor to the G7, we don't have any strings in common. However, it's a really easy move to just drop that index finger down to the high E and lift up everything else. And the same is true if you want to grab that open C, bringing it back to the B string. Okay, so, so and that's with any chord change, okay? Whether it's a three string chord change or not, you want to look for fingers that are in common with the next chord shape. And in doing so, you use those as an anchor point. So that's the one that lands first, and then you build the chord around it. Okay, a little bit of a detour, but I wanted to, that's a really important thing that, that took me a while to, to grasp as I was learning chords. But once I did, I thought, holy cow, if I could just find that finger that's in common, it makes chord changes just a, just a hair easier. Now let's talk about chromatic movement. There's two occurrences within this progression with these shapes that allow for chromatic movement, and, and that is the D minor to the E minor and the F to the G. Okay, so let's look at that D minor to the E minor. It's the same shape. I'm moving it up one, uh, two frets. All right, D minor, E minor. 
But the cool thing is, is again, remember how when we're introducing chromatic notes or using tones outside of the scale, as long as we present it in the right context, it's totally digestible and it actually sounds really cool. Here's an example. Okay, so if I'm strumming along and I want to change to that E minor from the D minor, let's say I want to go back to that D minor. Right? I can actually stop, even though I'm moving two frets, it creates a very cool uh, uh, motion. It actually creates motion within the chord shape. Now it's totally fine to jump from the, the D minor to the E minor and not stop in between. That's totally fine, and, and most often times, that's going to be what you're going to do. That's fine, but if you have the right time window, which is what we talked about yesterday, you can actually stop at that in-between fret to create kind of a dissonant, cool ear bender that leads to the next chord. It's really, con it's actually super common in, in kind of older country. And even more so in the next transition we'll look at, which is from that F chord to the G chord. The same exact, uh, um, the same exact process applies, right? We're jumping two frets with a closed position chord shape, meaning all the strings are fretted, right? Meaning we can stop in that in-between note as long as we go to our destination, in this case, the G chord, right? So as we're strumming along, And that's super common in old country. There's this big, uh, they call it the, the, the four to five change. In this case, in the key of C would be an F to a G, where it's, it's, it's really like dramatic. It's usually on a slow song. But, but that's just a little bit of context for you as to, even though these, these chord shapes don't represent the entire capabilities of our guitar, meaning they're focused on the high three strings, they're really useful because they're all connected, they're all within the key of C, of course, but they're all connected physically, and we can introduce chromatic movement, which is a really cool and effective technique, and I would encourage you to try it out. Uh, it won't be a success every time, but it just the more you try it, the more comfort you gain with it. Lots of hearts and likes for that. Just oh, so awesome. You know. yeah. Cool. Very cool. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. There's it's a always... flood, actually. Good. Maybe, maybe a, a bigger flood? Yeah. No, I'll show you. <laughs> Open, the yeah. Open the floodgates. Open the floodgates. I'm going to grab some keep coffee. Going, but, um, but truly, the, the cool thing, so there's a lot, of, no matter where you're at with this lesson, maybe you just started guitar, maybe you've played for a bit, but I want you to, to kind of reach in and grab what's applicable to you. If it's just the chord shapes, awesome. You've got some new chord shapes that are connected, and maybe it, it, it shed a little light on how to transition from one to another. If you've played a while and you think, well, I know my chords, uh, the, I don't know if I can even use these. Hopefully seeing that chromatic movement and, and using these different voicings will kind of make a light bulb go off for you. And of course, if you have any light bulb moments or are actually experiencing any small wins or anything right now, uh, please uh, let us know in the comments or, or shoot a, a heart or a like our way. And uh, yeah, we'd certainly appreciate that. But let me go through it. I'm gonna go through this at a couple different tempos. I picked this up, I was gonna take a drink. I didn't drink, but I'm gonna drink now. Hey, Tony, can hmm. I throw in a couple questions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with what you were just going over real yeah. quick. Um, so Robert asks, is the chord diagram for the F correct? Is he seeing this right? It appears that the D string is... Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Robert, that's a really good question. So at the top of the tablature, you'll see chord diagrams for each of these shapes. Because I generally make the F chord, uh, um, instead of just using the high three strings, I'll actually throw in the D string as well. Um, you can use either in this example. Um, if I was really strict and saying, hey, we're just using three strings, you can just go ahead and modify it or make the full shape and just play the high three strings. Um, my, my tablature software knows the chord diagrams that I use frequently, so it just kind of automatically injects them. So I'm sorry about any confusion there, but um, the cool thing about that is even if it's a four string F chord, the chromatic movement still, still applies. In fact, any completely closed position chord, completely closed meaning that all the notes are fretted, is completely movable. So if you happen to do a full F and you wanted to go to a full G, you could do that as well. 
Um, so that's that's a great question and, and good eye on that. Sorry about uh, any confusion that that may have caused. Was there was there another one? Yeah, there's one about the be diminished. Is that being left out? Oh, great question. So normally in a, in, a, in in a key, okay. So in this case, we're looking at the naturally occurring chords in the key of C. And what that means is we take the C major, use the notes within the C major, and create the chords within the key of C, naturally occurring. And usually there's a B diminished chord. Okay. But what I'm doing is kind of, I'm, 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 um, what am I, what's the right word? I'm kind of rearranging, scrambling, if you will. So instead of using the B diminished, which, which is a, um, well, it's kind of an intimidating sounding chord. I'm going to go ahead and substitute that with a G7, or rather I'm using the G7 to substitute the B diminished. The cool thing is, is they're essentially made up of the same notes. So they serve the same purpose. Let me give you an example. Um, if I'm going through triads in the key of C, that's a B diminished. I didn't really want to introduce this chord to anybody today because it's Friday and I wanted it to be a happy day. So instead of the B diminished, I'm actually going to use the G7. It sounds different, but the notes represented are the same they're just arranged a little differently. So it's a different voicing, but it serves the same purpose because that B diminished wants to lead us to a C. But the G7 does the same exact thing. So it serves the same purpose. So it's, it's what we call a chord substitution. Substitution. <laughs> Sorry. Lots <laughs> of light bulbs, by the Sorry, way. Sorry, yes, oh, there good. are light bulbs. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And you can do that for any key. You can take the, the, the what's called the five chord make it a dominant seven chord, and you can replace that diminished chord that represents the seventh degree. That's a little bit, that's, that's way out there. Uh, but for those of you who are curious, for those of you who are like, what is he talking about? Just don't even, don't even worry about it. Um, there's a lot more at play here than just some theory, theory jargon. Uh, so uh, let me go through and play these chord shapes um, because I want you to hear them in context. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna play them at a little bit of a slower tempo. Uh, focusing again on transitions, how these chords connect, and how you can best go from one chord to another. As I get to a, a faster tempo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slip in some chromatic passing chords, as we discussed, um, just so you can hear those in context. So I'm going to actually start this at 40 beats per minute. Do, uh, should they follow along, or is that later? Oh, is this for example, or yeah, no, this is a yeah. Please follow along okay. if, if you're if you got guitar in hand and you're feeling comfortable. We're going to start this at 40 beats per minute. I'm going to be changing on the half note. Okay. So each chord is going to get two beats. Uh, I'm just going to strum it once. I'm going to strum it on the downbeat. So I'm going to be strumming on the one and the three. Let me give you just a real quick example. This is the basic rhythm we'll be using. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now each of those strums is gonna be a chord change. I just wanted you to get the basic rhythm so we were on the same page before we started. So let's go ahead and start. We'll do the, the top line of the tab and then we'll go ahead and, and reverse it, uh, which is the bottom line of the tab there. So here we go. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, C, two, D minor. E minor, two, F, G, A minor, G7, C, stay right there, C, G7, A minor, G, F, E minor, D minor, C. Okay, 
right? So a little bit of a slower tempo, but hopefully that gave you uh, a little bit of time to connect the chords and make the shapes. If it didn't, don't worry about it. What I want to say with the metronome, the metronome can be an, an intimidating force in any room. Uh, it's not the most beautiful thing to listen to, but it's a great tool to use uh, to, to get better with, with your uh, relationship with tempo. But if you're not there yet, don't worry about it, okay? Worry about the chord shapes first. Okay, just get the chord shapes down. Don't even bring the metronome out. Don't even speak the word metronome. Okay, just get the chord shapes. Then work on going from one chord shape to another. Again, without the metronome. Once you feel like you can gain, the, you have those transitions, then start to slowly integrate the metronome. The metronome is not a necessity right now if you're not there yet. Okay, but for those of you who want to try it out, we're going to move on to 60 beats per minute here. Um, and again, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to strum, give it two beats, and then make that transition. So here's uh, 60 beats per minute. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, G7, C. C, G7, A minor, G, F, E minor, D minor, C. So that was our 60 beats per minute. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump to 80 beats per minute. I will just forgive myself right now. I don't know if I'll be able to actually name the chord shapes as we do 80 because I'm going to do some chromatic stuff. So it'll end up being a mouthful and I don't want to confuse. So I'm going to run through it. I'll try to do the chord shapes. Um, but if I get thrown off, I might, I might abandon ship on those. So this is 80 beats per minute. Four, one, two, three, four. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, G7, C, C, G7, A minor, G, F, E minor, D minor, C. That wasn't too bad. I was actually surprised. So hopefully you could hear that. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Levi. Um, hopefully you could hear the context of those chromatic movements. And that's why I left a two beat window for each chord. So if you happen to be on an E minor going to a D minor or vice versa or an F to a G, you could use that, that, that second beat to integrate that chromatic movement. Uh, so there you have it. That's, that is the lesson for today. Uh, I, of course, I want to get into your questions and your comments, but first, um, there's a lot of people involved in the 10-day challenge right now, and it's really humbling and it's really exciting to have all these guitar geeks gathered together in the same place. Whether you've been, uh, you know, you've been playing for a while and you, you're in a rut and you're just like, I need something. I don't even care what it is. I need something to pull myself out of this rut because I want to be learning again. Or maybe you've come back to the guitar from, you know, it's been sitting under the bed for quite some time. Maybe life happened and all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Now's my time. I got to finally do this. Um, it's really exciting to have so many of you in here. So I want to say thank you. And I also want you to know that I want you to keep this momentum going after the 10 day challenge stops. We only have one more week together. It's kind of like, it's sad. It's like graduation. Uh, but I want to still hang out with you guys, which is why I want to stress the fact that Tony's acoustic challenge opens up on January 29th. It's a public enrollment window. You're going to have four days to decide if Tony's acoustic challenge is something that you want to incorporate into your daily practice and playing routine. Uh, it's going to open January 29th and the open enrollment window ends on February 1st. And it's really cool because what we're doing on this 10 day challenge is exactly what happens within the Tony's acoustic challenge platform. In fact, I want to show you what it looks like because I don't want us all imagining something different. I want us all to be on the same page and, and the Tony's acoustic challenge members that are here right now taking part in this challenge. Uh, you guys already know what it looks like, but I just want to refresh everybody. So we're all on the same page. So as you log into Tony's acoustic challenge, it goes right to your home page. You'll see a calendar on the bottom to keep track of your progress and practice sessions. And then the daily exercises right on the top. Once you click that exercise, you're in the lesson page. So you're going to see that the lesson is a video smack dab in the middle and on the bottom, Bottom, there's four little buttons. You have the explanation video, much like we did here, and then a slow tempo, a medium tempo, and a fast tempo. 
okay? And this is a beautiful thing because these videos loop. So if you miss anything, it's, it's it literally, you can, you can rewind, go back, or you can just let it loop through. That's totally fine. Um, the explanation show, it breaks everything up into little bitty chunks so that you can get the lick or the warm up or the chord progression uh, and really understand it. And then you have a chance to graduate through those tempos the more comfortable you get with it. Now, on top of that lesson, you'll have a, a chance to download the tab if you want to. You can download the entire lesson if you wish. Uh, this is good for if you're traveling and you're not sure if you're gonna get Wi-Fi or something like that and then you actually have a chance to favorite it if this is an exercise that really resonates with you and you want to come back to it and I also want to show you so that's the daily lesson and then I want to show you the Academy which is um, it's really a, it's a place that you want you want to go if you want to do a deep dive to level up your skills and the cool thing about the Academy is there's there's a vast offering of courses flat picking finger picking slide you name it but the cool thing is that's broken up into foundations foundation one two three so on and so forth and there's a, there's a direct success path within the Academy meaning that you start in foundation one and once you complete one of those courses that unlocks foundation two once you complete one of the foundation two courses that unlocks foundation three so the more invested you get in your guitar playing, the more opportunities for different courses open up to you. It's a really cool uh, uh, flow, and there's been a lot of really great comments about it as well. And so I just wanted to give you a quick sneak peek into uh, what Tony's Acoustic Challenge is so you had a visual of, of, of what you'll be enrolling in on Monday if you so choose to do so. Now, uh, you can't, of course, enroll now. You can go to Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com and see, see uh, all the information. If you have any questions, all the questions are answered there. But for right now, I would encourage you to look on the Tony's Acoustic Challenge Facebook page. Um, there's a ton of reviews. I want to say there's a, a right around 100 or plus, there's probably 100 plus reviews at this point uh, of, of members actually really taking the time to share their experience with Tony's Acoustic Challenge, how it has impacted them. And the cool thing is it's, it's actually, it's, it's impacted everybody in, in a subtly different way. So I would encourage you to read those reviews if you're curious. Um, it's better to, to hear it from people that have actually experienced it. Uh, and of course, if there's uh, TAC members that are in tune today live, um, you, can, you can share your TAC love in the comments. I would love to hear it. And of course, people considering becoming TAC members uh, would also probably benefit from that as well. Uh, so uh, let's go to questions, comments, loves, likes, small wins. What's next? You guys have it's to keep me on track. It's all happening. Well, I just blacked out. I, <laughs> that was amazing. I'm really digging Levi's work over here because I'm getting to watch what what everybody's seeing. Oh, you know, and how, lucky how you. Levi's doing everything. Yeah. So before we dive in, I want to defer to Levi first because I know he sure. has a different set of eyes to me uh, okay. than me. <laughs> and so I was curious if he spotted anything or had seen anything that he would like to. You know, I don't have anything right now. Uh, just been clicking buttons. <laughs> so. That's fine. I just like to check. Sure. Uh, so you miss you miss those perhaps deeper gems that yeah that I pass over sometimes. Um, yeah. Again, many many light bulbs. Oh, uh, good. I did pass over one from Heidi light bulb. I've been doing these chromatic moves by ear for ages. Oh, good. Now I know why it works. Awesome. Good. Good for you. That's um, outstanding. Yeah. And there are, there were some other ones in there. Of course, we got some small wins coming. Um, you started talking about the, the membership, you know, Donna says TAC has made a huge difference in my playing. Oh, good. Uh, great investment. Uh, Pat says I'm impressed with how all the lessons have been building on each other. Nice. Um, or maybe just be that I'm advancing to the point where I can see the bigger picture. I think that's a really cool connection to make. I'm glad you said that, Pat. That's outstanding. Uh, Elizabeth says TAC is just what I needed when I was in a guitar rut. It has revitalized my playing. And I think I say... Correctly, Rika, uh, new new member just over one month, and I have learned more than the last three years of books and YouTube, if you oh, wanted to know. Awesome. Um, yeah. So just small wins? Standing, yeah. Uh, yes. should, should I roll into that? Yeah. I, I, you yeah, have if you yeah. got them, fire away. I, fine. F okay. Fine. <laughs> Let's do it. And by the way, Noah's going to be pulling these from the small wins post that you can find from within the course guide. And how do you find the course guide? Well, you just go to the group and pinned at the top of the group will be a big green start here. You actually have to click on that, and that course guide is updated every day with all the replays and then the next day's uh, link. So with that said, let's do it. <laughs> All 
All right, I'm going to hit a couple that I see on this side, then I'll pop over. Uh, Scotty says, just found a pizza pub that has live bluegrass music every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great small and, uh, <laughs> and then Pat said, small win, uh, naming chords at 80 beats per minute. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll, I'll share that small win with you. <laughs> All right, and, and from the tell us about your small wins post, uh, Joel says, I wish I knew this 40 years ago. Great lessons. I will be growing in my skills rapidly from these basic foundations. Uh, your comfortable teaching style is priceless. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Dale says, uh, TAC member here, my small win is slowly learning to play better. I've had severe CRPS for over 20 years, uh, a super painful nerve disease. Hands, fingers, arms, and shoulders don't function well, but slowly getting better day by day. Awesome. And Jim says, been playing only finger style for about six years. Realized the 10-day challenge was the perfect opportunity to learn to use a pick. Thanks, guys. Nice. And Austin, after playing years of electric rhythm and now expanding my acoustic horizon, the Day 4 challenge really opened my eyes on how much there really is to play. Uh, was always stuck on how to spice things up, and this 10-day challenge is doing it. Oh, fantastic. That's good. Chris. Uh, your tip on moving your palm closer to the neck to create more arch in your fingers is good. Been okay. playing for a while, but I've always had a bad habit of letting my fingers get too flat. Thank mm. you for explaining it so simply. Nice. All right. Larry. Um, oh, pff, never mind. Larry just says, when do we get to hear Noah and Levi play? <laughs> <laughs> Koozie Tuesday, episode 22. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean... And thank you to Scotty. He posted that. Oh, he did? Okay, right good. under that. I just good. noticed now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tracy, uh, day four, my fret fingertips hurt <laughs> equals play every day. Thanks, guys. Nice. <laughs> uh, Jim says, I've been inspired by the walking dog lesson to write a song last night. All it's right. In it's inspired by the current media frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, called, and, it's called, and it's called The Art of Self-Accuse. Huh, interesting. No. Um, thanks, Tony. Awesome. Um, Songwriting, fantastic. Katie said, couldn't make it live yesterday, so thanks for making it easy to replay. Uh, Tony, I finally got the walk-up when you emphasized start on a root and end on a root. Wow, major breakthrough. Killer. That's and, great. <laughs> and belated natal day wishes to you, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> she says, ha my grandmother used to say that, and it cracked us up. I've never heard that. I love that. Me neither. <laughs> and uh, last one on the post for now. Uh, Mike says, my small win is that I practice every night of the challenge. Even though I'm fighting a cold, it invigorates me. Thanks, Tony. Nice work. Fantastic work. So I got a few. So Michael says, uh, what are the chances that you will make the 10-day Play Every Day uh, video lessons available for future playback? Um, I can say that uh, this group will actually be shut down uh, shortly after the challenge ends, mm -hmm. um, but uh, members will have access to a, uh, an archive via um, the forums, yeah. I, I think. We actually, there will be an archive for members. Um, Mandy says, Tack is helping my playing so much and not only learning new things, but it has really motivated me to practice more. Couldn't wait for today's lesson. Thank you. Cool. Scott, which I think it's Mackie, Scott Mackie. It could be Scott McKee, but I think it's Scott Mackie. Um, you can let me know, Scott. <laughs> must, must, must join a jam group if you have one in your area. Playing with others will give a turbo boost to your playing. If there isn't one, start one. It's easy. Levi will help. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Yes, I will. I will help you get one started. Uh, so Levi's the jam group commander, yeah. pretty much. Uh, Lenny John says, uh, let's see. Yep, uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge question. If you are playing with another person, how do you make sure you are not stepping on each other's toes if you are both playing passing notes or chords? By the way, love how you moved from walking bass notes to passing chords today. Really makes it sink in. Awesome, like awesome. moment. Uh, Hashtag I'll, light bulb. I'll, <laughs> I'll shed a little bit of light on the the the, the dynamics. Playing with other uh, uh, guitar players is is something that um, it's funny because we. <laughs> I'm gonna just get a soap. This is a soapbox moment for a second. I I know for a fact when I first started and 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 kind of was dipping my toe in the water of maybe trying to play with other people. 
I just walked in with the assumption that everybody knew everything that I didn't know and that I knew very little, so everybody knew more than me. So it was, it was very timid, um, but also, you know, respectful of the players and things like that. So it's, I, and, but I think the funny thing is, is I think that everybody walks into a jam group or a playing setting thinking that. So if you turn it, if you kind of shift perspective and say, okay, well, this person probably knows things that I don't know. And that person probably, I probably know things that that person doesn't know. Then it can actually be a really uh, educational environment instead of this, I know this, you know that. Uh, I, I don't know if we can even do this together. So it's really important to approach it as if you see something that's new to you, ask. Because it's a great place to learn. But more, you know, more, more directly to your question, how do you make sure you're not stepping on each other's toes? Uh, first and foremost, be aware of the volume that you're creating. Okay, uh, that's one of the things that I, I, is a really easy fix. Even if if you're both both players are doing something interesting or intricate, if you kind of ease up on the gas pedal a little bit and, and approach it with with a, a lighter touch and, and less volume, that will create sonic space. Also, just kind of uh, start to. Um, uh, almost analyze what's happening. Maybe the player that you're playing with is really focusing on the bass end of things. That's fine. Then the, actually the chords we use today would be a perfect fit or vice versa. Um, and the third thing would be um, just kind of visual cues. If you see that you know a, a player is, is doing a similar rhythm that maybe does involve passing tones uh, and, and, and every time that they go around and play it that they're hitting those passing tones, maybe, you know what, maybe wait for the next song to, to, in, to, to, to do your uh, uh, little chromatic run or what have you. Uh, it's just kind of being aware of the space that's being created and, and, and trying to uh, puzzle piece instead of, instead of um, you know, bash heads. So hopefully those Hopefully that helps. Any other questions? Um, <laughs> you, got uh, you caught me. Lots <laughs> of uh, comments, lots and lots. Um. Yeah, I mean, since we're on the topic of mm -hmm. the membership opening, mm -hmm. um, and I know you talked about the Academy course and the foundation, um, how would you – what would you say would be the best approach for a beginner? Like, let's say they're a total oh. beginner and they're coming in as a member and they want to give it a try. Yeah, that's uh, a great what, question. What would be the best path for them? So I think one of the one of the the best things you could do. So you're new to guitar, you're coming into Tony's Acoustic Challenge, and there's there's different routes you can go. Uh, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is go to the academy. Okay, go to the academy because there's a very logical walkthrough with those foundations. Start on foundation one and pick one of those courses. Okay, and just sink into it. Don't worry about the daily practice at the present moment. Okay, so once you're in, get into that foundation and start working through that success path because you're going to pick up some really solid basic skills, some foundation stuff that when you go to the daily practice, you can be like, oh, that's that thing I learned back in the academy. And you can approach the daily practice with exactly where you're at. That's the beautiful thing about those daily lessons is that once you go over to those daily lessons, you can really form fit that lesson to wherever you're at, much like we're doing here now. Um, you know, if it's, if it's brand new shapes to you uh, in reference to today's lesson, great. That's a huge win. If it's the passing tones, that's, an, that's a huge win. If it's being able to transition, that's a huge win. So you really can pull whatever you need from the lesson. And the cool thing is, is if you revisit that lesson at a later time, you'll pull something else from it because you have brand new context that you're bringing to it. So for a beginner, I would say hop into the academy. That, that, would, be, that would be my, uh, my, my uh, recommendation for a first stop. Um, and then if you're curious about the daily lesson, go ahead and, and try a couple out. That's a, good, that's a real good question. Yeah. That's a good question, Noah. Yeah, if I may add, yeah. um, the way you design the lessons is that um, depending on your skill level, you obviously have the speeds that you can work with. Yeah, because I know because I know there's beginners that come in and uh, they'll even set a metronome for a slower yeah. beats per minute than what we offer absolutely. through through the site. Yeah, and then in addition to that, let's say I've uh, you know come across some people who uh, will say uh, the daily lesson's a little over my head. Yeah, um, encouraging them to hop in the libraries and then you oh, can yeah. kind of you got a smattering of you can pick and choose. Right. Um, uh, a specific exercise that you find that you want to work on or feel you're able to work absolutely. on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
there's a lot of different there's no let's just say that there's no dead ends i mean i think i think regardless of of how you're coming into tony's acoustic challenge there's 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 a route for you that you can get a lot of of light bulb moments from yeah yeah awesome you guys are all you're reading your phone and i'm i'm curious sorry to leave you out it's okay <laughs> I, I, if i had binoculars i might be able to read <laughs> there's just really really good discussion just you know, that people are talking among. I want to participate. Talking about um, <laughs> a lot of talk about jam groups. Oh, good. Um, part of actually, I might have a little. Let me see if I can bring in a screenshot here. Hold on. Um, the thing that we didn't show you is that uh, a large part of Tony's Acoustic Challenge is the community. And uh, let's see if I can pull this up. That's true. So this is this is a member map, and it, it clumps people uh, within certain areas. So. It, it looks like there's actually not that many, but each of those areas, you know, you notice in the San Diego area, there's 46. And this is only about a quarter of members have put their uh, the, a pin in on the map. So what we what we do is uh, those members get together in those areas and form a gram a, a jam group, <laughs> and <laughs> and then uh, they actually have their own little private jam group uh, section of the forum where they. Uh, coordinate and get together and and uh, show up in person and get to know each other. And, and sometimes, sometimes I'm lucky enough to visit digitally. Yeah, on a computer. And we and we've had, <laughs> which is really know, cool. <laughs> we've had West Coast and East Coast have simultaneous jam. Uh, yeah, get-togethers and then they Skype each other. Yeah, it's Skype pretty. Tony. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's, lots it's way of cool. really, really, uh, really cool stuff. And there's always seems to be pie. There always seems to be pie. It's like it's like a it's kind of one of the one of the things. Like if you see somebody walking down the street with a pie, you just assume, oh, you're going to a jam group because in our jam groups there's always pie. And, and a, well, guitar case that's also a good yeah indicator. yeah that, yeah that's a tough that's a tough balancing act. <laughs> okay, so oh. so Tony, it looks like I mean we're coming up on an hour here. Okay. That was an awesome session. That was a great mm-hmm. session. Um, what's What's the deal next week? Yesterday so, you were kind of teasing. Yeah, so the next blues, week, and I, I think that got people really excited. Uh, well, next week, <laughs> next week we're going to be obviously. Uh, just want to remind you again, Tony's Acoustic Challenge uh, open enrollment January 29th through February 1st. It's a four day window, so that's that's a huge thing for next week. But as far as what we're going to be working on here in the 10 day challenge, we're going to follow that same exact practice framework like we've been following, but we're going to apply it to some finger style stuff next week. Now, don't don't gasp because. If you're scared of finger style, we're gonna uh, it's gonna be we're gonna do this in little chunks. So by the end of next week, I guarantee you you'll be more comfortable with finger style. In fact, you'll be playing finger style. Uh, and if you've actually already played finger style, I'm gonna introduce some really cool techniques to you. Uh, we're gonna be doing uh, kind of some blues focused items. So a lot of like. Um Stuff like that, okay? Um, so next week's going to be full of, uh, of of light bulb moments as well. We're going to start with a warm up that's going to get you comfortable with finger style, uh, two different methods, and then the lick is going to be something that I definitely want you to tune in for, and then so on and so forth. It's going to be another cascading moment of awesomeness next week. So, so it's going to be the same the same format. So you're going to show up for the live. Uh... Uh, class, yeah, and uh, so those those get done within the first fifteen to twenty minutes, so we can get right to that. But then we're adding something really fun next week. We're going to be celebrating you. So as people join Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we're going to be naming uh, names. We're going to be uh, congratulating people as they come in, and uh, so we want you to be on that list. So watch your email and make sure to join Monday morning because we want to be celebrating you. Yeah, it's going to be like a graduation kind of a thing. Or yeah. like a or an, or like what's a the opposite? Party? Like you're starting before you. Oh, I guess you're graduating from this into like a commitment celebration. <laughs> Is that <laughs> we're looking for input on the names? <laughs> yeah, you can you can name the party uh, whatever you want. Um, but no, I look forward to next week. It's going to be really cool to uh, connect with you again. Uh, and I want to thank you really sincerely uh, for tuning in this week and sharing your time with me with us. Uh, it's been a blast, and this really wouldn't happen without your guys' participation. So thank you so much. I'm going to uh, preemptively welcome Dennis to TAC. He says, next Monday, you can welcome me as a TAC member. So awesome. right on. 
welcome. Glad welcome, you're Dennis. in. <laughs> Very cool. And, and, and truly, thank you guys uh, for, for tuning in. It means a lot. And again, you, you make this happen. So um, uh, until next week, uh, we got a bunch of blues coming up. We got a bunch of fingerstyle stuff coming up. And I, I just look forward to catching up with you. So we'll see you Monday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time right here. And uh, we'll just do the same thing. And we'll be celebrating some, some new TAC members. So until next week, cheers. Have a great weekend. My name is Tony Policastro. I'm part of an underground group of acoustic guitar enthusiasts you've probably never heard of. We're not here to play face-melting guitar solos or judge other guitar players. Our purpose is much greater than that. For us, it's about expanding our quality of life through music and having fun with our guitar, not just mastering it. Getting better at guitar is proof that we do have what it takes to be a guitar player which means we can build stronger bonds with friends and create lasting musical family traditions. But if you asked a guitar snob or a music academic, they would turn up their nose and say their way is better. Yet this way of seeing the guitar is changing lives every single day. We follow a specific framework and set of values that keeps us focused on what matters most. Human connection, constant progress, and fun. It's happening, and we call it living the acoustic life. This is our acoustic life, and these are our stories. 